back in the day when I was like 11, this is pre-transition, um, there used to be this program every Saturday. It was called The Caring Place. And it was basically a program that a church organized. And it was different churches, but um, they were hosted at different churches. But they would have a bus, a big white bus, not a yellow bus. They painted it white. And it said the Karen place on the side of it. It was a regular bus, but it was just white. And they would pick kids up at different bus stops around the neighborhood and take them to a church and we would go there and we would learn about Jesus. We would learn about the Bible. We would learn about um, all kind of church stuff, you know, you know, just the stories, Moses, um, all the good, you know, Sunday school for kids stuff. And there would be a fun guy. It wouldn't be like typical church where you got the seriousness of the pulpit. And, you know, he, the guy is not the, it's not the main pastor, but maybe like a youth pastor. And he's off the, um, he's off the pulpit and like on the, on the floor with us. And, and we're in the pews or in the seats and we're talking to him. And he's teaching us about the Bible. And if we answer the questions right about what we learned about the Bible, we would get like prizes, like bags of candy, um, toys, just different stuff. And it was just a fun thing for the kids to do when that, when we were younger and it would be all the people in the neighborhood. It was social, it was fun, and it was pretty amazing and I looked forward to it every Saturday <laughs> so and it's something that I have been doing for so long like I remember doing it when I was like six I remember doing it when I was like six and um, it wasn't the church that my family went to um, but it was a caring place and you got up early to go and participate in the caring place and it was so 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 so, so amazing and I love doing it. So I did it from the time I was like five to like 11. But this is the last, the story that I'm telling y'all is the last time that I went to the Karen place. So I lived in a neighborhood that we called the Nickel in, in Indianapolis. It was hood, it was ratchet, no fiends everywhere. It was hood as ratchet. Exactly why the Karen Place people came and picked us up so we can go and get some Jesus. <laughs> so, at this time in my life, I, it was pre-transition. I was like 11. And, you know, I was in full, I don't know what this time of my life was, but let me tell y'all what was going on. I knew exactly who I was in regards to my sexuality in regards to um, what I was attracted to. I knew I was attracted to boys. It was without a doubt. I knew what it was like. I was already experimenting with boys. M my peers, we were playing with each other and doing little stuff like that already and had been doing it since prior to that. Um, so I knew that. I also, by this time, now mind you, I'm 11. My difference, what was difference bet between me and other boys, that feminine quality, I learned that that was something negative when I first came to school. Like not even, even in my family before I went to school. So I knew that my femininity was something that was negative. It was something that I learned to, like I said, I am not an introvert and I'm not a extrovert. So when I wanted to say something and and be happy and be joyous, I knew that that would show my personality. It would show my femininity. So I would hide that part of me. So I became a quiet child that is not naturally quiet. Okay? So I knew how to hide it. I knew if I spoke too much, they would clock that I was acting. At the time, remember, Prior, I didn't know what gay was. Like, it's six, seven. I didn't know what gay was. But 11, I knew what gay was. Like, I knew that it meant that it was a boy who likes a boy. Homosexual, faggot, 
I didn't know punk meant faggy. Like I said, I think I told, talked about this in the, um, in a previous video. The word punk, where I'm from, was really associated with cowardice. It was not really associated with gay. Faggot, homosexual, homo, queer, gay blade, all that shit was negative connotation for faggot shit, gay shit, being gay. But punk was more, um, you're a coward. Like, you won't fight people when they bullying you. you. You're scary. You scare. Oh, you being a punk. And it make it... That's how I understood it. Maybe they did have it in that connotation, but it it in my mind, being a punk was different than you calling me a punk was about cowardice. You be me being scared of something. So nobody really called me a punk. You call me a faggot, but I'm definitely not no motherfucking punk because I beat your ass. <laughs> Who else you gonna beat? <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> Victoria, love you, baby. Um, it wasn't until I got to the South that I correlated that punk to Southern people meant homosexual. Um, so these words, by 11, I knew what these words meant. I knew what gay was. I knew it. <laughs> I knew all of that kind of stuff. Prior, I didn't really know why people were calling it to me, but I figured it out through the process of interacting with people, and I knew what it meant at that time. So, at 11, I definitely knew. So, I also had set up defense mechanisms to make my navigation through life comfortable. I didn't want to be ridiculed for it. I didn't want to be ostracized for it. I wanted to be a kid that had fun, that played like everybody else. But soon as people saw that in me, kids, because they learned it from their fucking parents, of course, soon as people sensed this gayness in me, it was negative. They didn't want to play with me. They didn't want to have me involved in things. They didn't want to, um, if the boy, I love to ride my bike. If the boys wanted to ride the bike, one of the boys would be my friend and be like, oh, well, let me go get Diamond. Not Diamond, my old name. But let me let me go get Diamond. But the other boys would be like, oh, no. He a fag. Uh -uh. So it ostracized me. <sighs> so I knew in social settings that I had to I, I, I had to make up these defense mechanisms to not get people to see my gayness. okay? So one of the main defenses is don't talk, don't speak. Be quiet. Don't say anything. Don't interact, which is kind of defeating the purpose. But don't interact. They won't clock your tea. They won't know. Just be. Just be in the situation. So I was, I, and I became really good at that. <laughs> I became really, really good at that. Another thing, be dumb. Everybody else is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> don't answer questions if somebody uh if somebody like if you're doing if you're in a classroom and uh you, there's a test or something <laughs> and you know all the answers to don't say the answers don't raise your hand because if you raise your hand and you know all the answers everybody is gonna be like you know, it's going to be something negative. You're gonna be get, you're gonna gonna get ridiculed. I remember I was in fourth grade and um and I talked to a teacher. I, I answered the question. The, I answered the question right. Like every my my answer was right to the teacher, but how I said it, the feminine way and the country way, because we were in Boston, the country way and the feminine way of how I said it. The teacher was like, Tan, it like, when I said the, when I said it, he mocked me and all the kids laughed. The damn teacher. And I remember that moment like, like it was yesterday because I was so excited about having the right answer. And he just, the, oh, it just was horrible. Like, as soon as he did it, 
10 because the answer was 10 and and in Boston because they have this East Coast accent and I'm from Indiana so I have this country this to them which is country <laughs> um, this country accent where I say 10 10 and they don't say 10 like country like that they say it in another way so you know he but he didn't just say it he wasn't just talking about my country accent because he did like this tan and that we know what that means <laughs> and when he did it the girls the boys everybody just laughed about it and it was so embarrassing so humiliating and i never wanted to answer questions anymore again <laughs> and I never, I stopped. <laughs> so I just had these these defense mechanisms that um, that worked. I stopped. I started being dumb. I started not being dumb. Like I was still, I loved reading and I loved learning. But sharing people, sharing with people that I, I'm intelligent was not something that was, that brought me, great and um, good attention anymore like it did when I was a younger child. So I backed off of that. So these were, you know, these were defense mechanisms to protect myself from ridicule and bullying and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I say all of that to say this. So this particular Saturday, going to the Karen place, I was, my mother let us go, but she also let me take my brother. My brother is five years younger than me. Now, my brother is a straight boy, so he didn't learn this defense mechanism because he didn't need to. <laughs> so he was loud and boisterous and just a boy, <laughs> like it, a very rambunctious boy. Like, you, you know how you see boys just kind of just do whatever, where if you meet a little girl who's been conditioned to be a nice little girl. She's always sitting pretty with her legs crossed. You know, they're a little quiet. You know how patriarchy is. <laughs> but this was a boy and he was loud. He was obnoxious. And this is, is the traits of my brother now <laughs> as an adult. But this is, he was younger than me. So I was 11. So he was like six. Okay. So I was a mature child. So my mother let me take him and plus my mom was on like fully on drugs at this time she was oh i ain't gotta worry about y'all for a couple of hours go ahead so get high. <laughs> that was her life <laughs> so so we go to the karen place now we go to the karen place and like i said this is a almost it's like a bible study we learn about jesus everybody talk about god everybody talk about goodness and da 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 but these are some ratchet ass little kids that have ratchet ass, dolphin ass parents, ratchet parents, ghetto parents, hood parents, answering all these questions and um, all these Bible questions. And I'm I'm winning prizes, and other people are winning prizes. It's just a glorious time at the caring place. It was so 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 caring. So finally, it's time for us to leave the church and go back on the bus. So. My brother won some things, too, like with answering the questions. And I won some stuff. My brother won some stuff because he was intelligent as well. And so we're on the bus. And as a defense mechanism, I go to the back of the bus where nobody is behind me. I hate when people are behind me. And, um, and I go to the back. And I'm just sitting in the corner just quiet looking out the window. Because all the boys... Are up there being loud, jumping around, talking about boy stuff, doing boy stuff, and da, da 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 da. And I know in these close quarters, if I get to yapping and talking and do 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 do, are you gay? <laughs> Ooh, I think he gay. <laughs> so I'm quiet. I'm quiet. And now, mind you, I have been talking, but I was strategically talking in, you know, in whenever I needed to, to win my candy and stuff. <laughs> so 
my little brother is up there just running his mouth, running, 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 running. And like little boys do, they get to arguing. So, being that black masculinity is, black male masculinity can be so toxic, when they get to arguing, the next step is they get to fighting or threatening or threatening to fight. Oh, I'll beat you up. Don't make me punch you in your face. Now, these are children. These are, nobody is over 12. These are, they range from five years old to 12. We are kids. <laughs> so, so. My brother is arguing with this little boy. I cannot even remember what they were arguing about. But in my mind, this is my little brother. I know what my mother has taught me about fighting with my little brother. Like, y'all brothers, y'all stick together. One fight, the other fight. But remind you, this goes totally against my defense mechanism. Being quiet and just hiding and shrinking back. I can't defend my little brother by hiding and shrinking back. So this is the total opposite. So I'm going through this emotional thing where I want to choke my brother. Like in that moment, like be quiet, sit down, stop arguing with him. I don't want to fight, stop. But I can't say this because I don't want to be a punk. <laughs> because I don't want that either. Um, because being a punk in the hood or showing weakness in the hood, it will it will escalate a a situation even faster. So it so I'm in this moment like, will you shut up? Thinking this to my brother, will you shut up? And I said, finally, I my brother, the the boy is arguing with my brother, and my my brother says. When the boy tells him that he's going to hit him in his face, my brother says, you're not going to do shit to me because I'll get my big brother to beat you up. <laughs> so, the Karen place. <laughs> has just turned into the fighting place. <laughs> so the boy say, who is your big brother? And my brother points to the back of the bus and me. One of the other big boys who goes to school with me says, oh, that's your brother? Hey, a fag. Like if I could, it's like if I could just run in the corner, if I could melt through the cracks of the bus onto the street and evaporate up to the sky, <laughs> that would have been the best thing that could happen to me. Because <laughs> I was so, it wasn't, it just, oh, I can't even explain the feeling of being on the back of this bus hot. And it was I wasn't even hot from the heat. It was hot because of the circumstances. And they all turn around and look at me. And now you have called me a fag. And fag is a triggering word at this age. <laughs> it's not something that you have built a shell up around you. So because of the years of being called a fag. <laughs> You haven't built that shell. So fag is fighting words. So now you have called me a fag. You're messing with my brother. And my mother is the type of person that... she's My mother is not going to let you run from a fight. That's just... No. <laughs> it's not, I'll beat your ass for running. <laughs> That's the type of mother that I have. If you run... I'll beat your ass for running. So, I'm, nobody has put their hands on anybody. So, I say, when he says, oh, oh, he's a fag. I say, what do I say? 
Like I said, something about you not going to touch me or you're not going to do nothing and you're not going to do nothing to my brother. Something around that lines. I can't remember exactly what I said. But once I said something, my brother wasn't even the focus anymore. He, everybody's anger, whatever that was on the bus, everybody's anger switched to me. So we get to our bus stop. And they're still talking shit. Now, I got to get from the back of the bus, through, down, down the steps of the bus, and walk to my house. Which is, is it's like a half a block. In my, we're, like, we're in the middle of 30th and 31st. And they drop us off on 31st. So... So I'm thinking on mine, if I can, they're talking shit. Like they're, we all get off the bus. Everybody, this is everybody stop. So we all get off the bus and I'm thinking if I can just make it to the house, don't nobody hit me. The long as nobody hits me, n- long as nobody put their hands on me and I can just make it to the house, everything will be okay. That's, a, that's what I'm thinking. But I'm embarrassed I'm angry. I'm boiling hot. <laughs> I it, everything I want to fight. Actually, I do. <laughs> I want to fight. I'm embarrassed, but it's multiple boys. It's not just one. If it was one, I felt like I would have fought. But it's multiple boys, and they're following me. Now they're calling me fags. They're doing this. They're they're behind me, just calling me fag, just trying to egg me on. Nobody has touched me yet. So now, mind you, this is a half a block that this happened. Just a half a block. <laughs> so they see the adults in the neighborhood see this commotion and it's not a adults it's hood dudes that are like grown or 20s or that we consider grown because we not you know we're not older at all so we consider these 20 year olds and these 17 year olds and the 18 year olds adults so one of the main dudes his name was fish and he was one of the main drug dealers in the area he sees what's going on and they kind of like instead of going like defusing the situation, they are like egging it on too. Not saying anything about me, but they're like, oh shit, oh shit, they about to rumble. It's like a instead of being adults and like calming the kids, don't stopping the kids from fighting, they are kind of like egg not egging it on by saying, yeah, hit that motherfucker. It, it's nothing like that. But they're like Ah oh, shit, they about to rumble. Like they're fueling it still. And so I'm just I'm just listening to all this and I'm getting more and more embarrassed. And when I get angry, embarrassed, anything that I turn red, <laughs> I'm like scared. So it just it just does it. I turn red, I get hot, I get oh God. My brother leaves me. He runs and not running. And he's not running because he's like scared because he's still talking shit. He's running to go get my mother because we're like a half a block and he thinks it's about to pop up. He's running to go get my mother. So my mother tells me in hindsight, I'm telling y'all what she said. My brother runs in the house and says, and says, oh my God, Diamond, not Diamond, but my old name, (laughs) Diamond is about to fight. And my mother says, then what the fuck are you doing? (laughs) And my little brother is like, I came to get you. And my mother's like, so your brother is about to fight and your ass came to get me and you not fighting? I will beat your motherfucking ass. (laughs) And my mother gets the bell. (laughs) And my brother runs back out the house. (laughs) So I see my brother run back, runs back towards me. And they, all the boys, now most of them are bigger than me. Not big, big, but you have some little ones. You got some 
bigger ones, and I'm kind of like the middle. So nobody has put their hands on me yet. But they're running, they're um, they're walking behind me, talking about, come on, fag, fight, fag, come on, fag, come on, fag. And I'm just hot, boiling hot. And all of a sudden, I see my mother's body come around out off the porch and walk towards me, looking at me. I know she knows what's going on. And it's something about your mother. My mother was a god to me. Like, even in her flaws with the drug addiction. But if you grew up in a single-parent home, you know what I mean. Your mother is your god, man. She's a, a... Can't no motherfucker talk to make me not believe that a black woman ain't god. <laughs> ain't the ain't the cradle of humanity. This this is my mother was my strength. She was my rock and everything. My mother was my caring place. When I see my mother, it is almost like Popeye <laughs> eating spinach. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot lose. I cannot. I get strength. I get. And when I see my damn mama, when I saw my mother coming down that street, tears start coming down my eyes. And I turned around. I, it, you feel safety with your mama. I know that if my mama's there, oh, it's popping. <laughs> when I see my mama, when I see her, my tears just say vroom, and I turn around and go Tasmanian devil on everybody. <laughs> and I am just punching, boom, boom, just punching and swinging and biting and scratching and every piece of anger. <laughs> <laughs> that I felt from that bus and everything, I just let it all out so ferociously that the dudes, the du the adult dudes, they're like, damn. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Ratchet as fuck. <laughs> so I'm twirling everybody, biting and punching and going ham. Going just totally crazy. <laughs> I got blood on my shirt. It just, I think I went so nuts that it, that it, it, it shocked them. Like the boys that I was fighting, it shocked them. <laughs> it was, it was crazy. So after I get done twirling, everybody wearing them out, my mother grabs me and say, all right. You don't, you don't kick some ass. Stop, stop, stop fighting. Calm down. And she grabs my face. And you know, your mama. <laughs> and she grabbed my face, wiped my eyes, wiped the tears from my eyes, wiped me, wiped, wiped me. And she was like, that's what, that's what's up. <laughs> Calm down. Everything okay. I got you. Feel it. Feel that victory. You put the hole, put the hole in their ass. And I calm down. I'm sniffling because I'm crying. <laughs> but you know, your mother got that touch. So she calms me down. And the, the beast. <laughs> That's why I think my mother's a child of Oshun. I'm a child of Ogun. And I, my mother's a child of Oshun. I think my mother's a child of Oshun. Because baby, anybody know about Oshun and Ogun, baby? She... She's that honey. <laughs> Cause she calmed me down and I just I went from Hulk to we walked back in the house and my mother get to cussing my little brother out. When your brother is fighting motherfucker, your ass need to be fighting too. And uh, she going the hell off on my little brother for running from the fight to come get her. Oh, she was so that pissed her off. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I woke up the next morning and came outside with my dog and sat on the porch and all the dudes in the neighborhood, all the dudes, 
that totally either ignored me or snickered at me or they never the dudes in the neighborhood would never really fuck with me directly but you can tell like they would be they would say shit like of course they would call me oh he's sweet and they wouldn't be like oh you a faggot they wouldn't say that they would be like oh he got some sugar in his tank that like little whispering to each other oh he funny acting he funny he one of them funny he gonna be one of them funny boys uh, they would say little shit like that, and I wouldn't. I know what it means, and but they were adults, so I didn't, and I didn't know them, and you know, so it just they just was in the neighborhood, so they they I was dismissed as the gay boy. I came outside that next day, and as soon as I walked out on my porch, the main little thuggy dude was like, "What's up, little man?" And came up and gave me dab and all this. They were giving me all this praise for winning and fighting. They never had gave me any praise, any encouragement, anything until I got in a fight with some niggas. That was weird as fuck to me. It was weirder to me as a child. And now that I'm under, now that I'm older and I understand toxic black male masculinity and why, how, and how um, white supremacy played its part into creating that toxicity, it was, it was so awkward and weird to me that I couldn't enjoy it. It was just, it felt disgusting. Even as a child, like I didn't know the dynamics of it when I was younger. But in my mind, I was like, these niggas who kind of teased me too, barely gave me attention, sell drugs to my mother. Now you are showing me love because I got in a fight. For people who were bullying me, it felt weird as fuck. <sighs> the neighborhood for me was really quiet after that. Nobody really bothered me. Nobody played with me. Nobody, um, I was even more isolated. It didn't. It didn't create any new friends. <laughs> it didn't, I won, but it, it, it made me even more isolated because it forced the other kids to take sides. It, it forced them to pick sides. Do I pick the faggot who won or do I pick the bullies? And most of them picked the bullies because they were normal. They weren't the faggot that the adults even teased. So it ostracized me even more. But you motherfuckers didn't fuck with me no more. So it just was a bittersweet feeling. Real bittersweet. So tell me what you think.